So the documentary is based on the book of the same title by Mark Gerzon, and I'm curious where the inspiration came from to turn this into a film. The inspiration was uh, Ben Reiki, the director, one day saw Susan Bro speak at a convention. And Susan Bro is the mother of Heather Heyer, um, who was the woman who was killed tragically in Charlottesville when that white supremacist drove his car into a group of counter protesters. So he saw Susan speak and he went up to Susan and he said, look, I want to tell your story. And he started to think about the, the, the perfect title for this film, the story of reconciliation of healing. And he thought of the title, The Reunited States. And then he thought to himself, this is probably too good to be true. I should Google this and see if there's anything else out there. He Googled it and then he found Mark Burzon's book. So he reached out to Mark and Mark said, you know what, Ben, I've been waiting for someone for the last five years to reach out to me so that we can make this movie. Let's make this movie. So that's kind of how the movie came to be. And Mark then opened up all the doors to all these people that are in the film. Awesome. Now, now either one of you, let me ask you this. How would you describe the film to recommend it to audience? Because as you, as you guys may already know, this is it's probably not everybody's cup of tea, but if there was a general audience, how would you describe the film to, to them? Yeah, I would say it is a documentary chronicling the emotional journey of everyday Americans as they try to reach across the spectrum, the political divide, and reach across to people who are different from them and try to bridge our divisions in the United States. Over the last four years, we've seen tremendous turmoil, tremendous division. We've seen families being torn apart. We've seen physical violence. We've seen a, a, an insurrection for God's sakes in the last few weeks. And this film is about, about the journeys of everyday people that are trying to mend those divisions, heal those divides, bring families together, have a conversation with the other person across the other side of the aisle. So it, it, it profiles solutions, it profiles everyday Americans and, their, and what they're trying to do. And hopefully it leaves the viewer with a sense of, I can also take part in healing some of these divisions and I can, I can take part by engaging in the same practices that our main characters do, things like listening, Things like learning to have a conversation, things like being open minded and willing to explore. So that's what the film is about. Let me ask you a question real quick. Is that where the I know when we when me and him watch the film together, because normally we any film we do, we've already seen it a billion times. But of course, with you guys, we, we made the decision to sit down and watch it together and take our own notes. Is that where the roundtable conversation came out? It, it looks like an AA meeting, but clearly it's not an AA meeting. But everyone's sitting around the table, uh, should I say, in the center expressing themselves. Is that kind of what you guys aim towards to everybody to be heard? Yeah, so some of those some of those scenes in the film that you're referring to where people are kind of having group conversations and, and group dialogue, those are those are actual workshops that are held by some of the people that are profiled in the film. So for example, the Millennial Action Project, which which hosts some of those conferences, they actually bring together bipartisan partisan lawmakers across both Republicans and Democrats. Uh, that are that are young, that, that are millennials, that are under the age of 30 or less, and they actually bring together different groups and facilitate those kinds of dialogues. So that was th those were not conversations or dialogues that were set up specifically for the film. It was more like just because of our verite documentary style of filmmaking, where we were following our characters, many of our characters are involved in these kinds of more formal bridge building movements that specifically get people across the aisle to come in and have a conversation and they facilitate and they level set and they set ground rules and they kind of say, hey, you know, you're interrupting that person or hey, you're saying something demeaning to that person, you know, please don't do that. Try to deescalate the tension. So we were just we were just profiling everyday interactions and meetings that actually take place in due course in some of these um, group group settings. I mean, the, the movie came at a perfect time. Um, I guess uh, it, it came at a perfect time if you're looking at it from a, a rational perspective, if you're looking at it from a far one side or the other, uh, I've seen a lot of comments where, you know, it's like, of course you want unity now. We'll, we'll get into that. But what I, what I do want to say is that the premiere, the red, the red and blue carpet premiere, the, the virtual event that you guys had, I think that was very inspiring. The, see the comments in that after like it was weird to see so much positivity on in an online environment it's just it's, it was almost like culture shock to see that somebody in the comments or i think it was in the comments or in the actual premiere itself somebody said we have an awesome people problem much more than we have an awful people problem so it was really cool in the midst of um an impeachment trial a country clearly divided to have this one moment in time that it it was it was optimistic it left me with a feeling of optimism after the red and blue carpet premiere
Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer.